many people ask me why, why we have so many musicians who are so big personalities and have a personal wi voice. And that's why they not are not forced into a, a, a formula, but they are encouraged to develop their own voice. Not to perfection, but to be personal. My name is Jan Ole Otnes. I am the director of a venue in Oslo called the National Jazz Scene. And I've been doing that for eight years. But I've been promoting jazz since I was a teenager. The first concert I ever presented of an international band was Keith Jarrett Trio in 1969. And then for man many years I was a part of a jazz club in different places in Norway. And then I got the position as um, the director for a concert hall in Bode, where I lived, and did that for 10 years. And in 2001, I was asked to take over as the artistic director of Molde International Jazz Festival, the oldest festival in Norway, the biggest in Norway. And I did that for 13 years. And uh, uh, so it, it's been a part of my life to present music, to play, present live music to an audience. And that's my mission, I think, to do that. And just a few words about the national jazz scene, which is funded by the government. Uh, we got quite heavy funding, and uh, the aim is to be the most important year, year through venue in, in Norway. And we also cooperate with venues around Norway. We are organizing tours in Norway to both big and smaller clubs. And the program we present four concerts per week. Uh, we do all kinds of things. Uh, ten Saturdays uh, through the year we present young kids coming on a big professional venue for the first time. Uh, every second Wednesday throughout the year we do a series called Unheard where we present mostly students from Norway or post students from Norway but also from international academies and institutions. And then we do most of the big Norwegian names and also international names like Brad Meldo, John Schofield, Chikorea, that can fit into a venue with a capacity of 300. So um, I'm super happy to both present the music and also to go into cooperation with uh, different organizations and um, like the International Jazz Platform. When I was in Molde, uh, I was a part of uh, Take Five, also a talent develop developing program, where the first group of musicians who came to Kent in England for this was two Norwegians, Gard Nilsen and Ole Morten Wogan, and also Maite Kobara. And then they met and they made, made this band. And so I've been following those guys and all others that we have been lucky to work with. So our mission is both to, to uh, develop new talent, but also to present the biggest names in jazz. Well, the most important institution is the Academy in Trondheim, started 40 years ago with uh, two musicians were in the forefront of this. Not theoretical guys, but musicians wanting to learn um, younger musicians to play by ear, not to repeat what others had done before, but to, to in a way, present their personality. Uh, and this academy has been a big success. And a lot of the young or the new generation of musicians come from this education system. The first group will, among them were, were Nils Petter Moldar, who is now one of the big Norwegian jazz names. And a lot of generations after him. And <coughs> uh, we also have schools now in Oslo, in Bergen, in Kristiansand and Stavanger. Uh, and some of these are based on the same uh, theories that was developed in Trondheim by listening, not by, and by imitating, but not like uh, being the new Miles Davis, but being the new themselves. 
So that's why many people ask me why, why we have so many musicians who are so big personalities and have a personal voice. And that's why they not are forced into a, a, a formula, but they are encouraged to develop their own voice. Not to perfection, but to be personal. I can give an example. The, the, <coughs> the students on the second year in, in Trondheim, I think they're normally a group of 10 to 12 students, they have to organize a tour themselves throughout Norway. They have to get the funding, they have to book the jobs, they have to make the posters, they have to make the ads, everything. So they are able to meet the real life after they've finished as students. So this is a successful s story about doing their own tour. And of course they get help from, from mentors and other uh, the teachers, but they have to do it themselves. And they every year play at Vosayos, and they also come to Victoria, my, my venue in Oslo. So it's important for them to already then on the second year be able to know how to cope with reality after they've finished. Well, we try as best as we can, but the Norwegian Jazz Forum, which is the organization for both festivals, venues, clubs, uh, big bands and musicians. And they got a lot, lot of help from them. And they also got get a lot of help from Music Norway, who is the export body in Norway. And we have a good funding system, as you said. Uh, the Arts Council funds both bands, venues and festivals. So we have a kind of stable financial system. Still, it's not enough, but we have come a long way to, to have a, uh, a good system for that. And we try to have a kind of recommended minimal fee. It's not everyone who are able to pay it, but at least we have a system that encourage both musicians to ask for this and the promoters to pay what is regarded as a minimum fee. So we hope that this will help artists to, to uh, develop their careers and to be successful. A lot of those musicians also who has this education become teachers in addition to be a musician. And some will work in a bar or do other work, but it's not, I mean, it's so many new people coming up and new, new students and new musicians coming up. So it's not enough work for everyone in Norway. So we also have to help them to travel abroad where it's not the same conditions as they have at home. There is no policy uh, towards this, but I mean, they are encouraged to, to, to think ecological and to think iron, uh, environmental, <laughs> but it's not easy. Uh, the Arts Council have put up a few measures to support those who take this into account. Uh, but we don't have a real good policy on this at this moment. And the awareness in Norway is high, but for eight years now we have had a conservative government and it's a lot of good intentions, but a lot of blah, blah, blah. So when the EU last week presented their new plan for the next 20 years, they way beyond what we are doing in Norway. And central pol politi politicians in Norway now says that this is not realistic. So I hope we will have a change when we get a new government this fall that will be more responsible to these questions. I mean, in Norway, I, I just checked, uh, when you buy a new car in Norway, everyone is encouraged to buy an electric car and a hybrid. And now it's 90% of new cars sold is electric or hybrid. So that's a good thing. The thing that is not that good is that we still lack enough chargers for these cars. But it's coming and it's go going, uh, going to be better. And in Oslo, we had uh, the local government for Oslo City is uh, a labor, so socialist and green party uh, government. And they have done a lot more than we have done on national basis. So um, it's, a, it's a much stronger focus in, in, in smaller cities and also like in Oslo than it is on the national level. 
we are still digging for more more oil to get more money in the, in the bank so so um, in one hand they say we have to take responsibility on the other hand we are still searching for more oil more oil more oil <laughs> in one way it's good because it gives us more money to and the freedom to to spend money but at the same time we have to think of the environment in a much larger scale than we do I mean, what is problematic for us, because Norway is in a bit on the outskirts of Europe. So to get to Norway, it's a long trip, so most of them fly. And then you e eventually come to Norway, and you are touring in Norway. The distances between the cities are also so long that if... I, I mean, they are cooperating with Stavanger and Bergen and Trondheim and Molde and Tromsø. To go to Tromsø, it's two hours by, by, by plane. You cannot do that by train. You c to go to Trondheim by train, it's eight hours. The same to Bergen and to Stavanger. So it's so time consuming that it's difficult to make a tour with a low co carbon footstep in this case. So uh, we're working on it, but for many artists, it will take two days because sitting on a train for eight hours, getting up early, doing a show, it will be exhausting in the end. So in parts of Norway, you can go by train or by other means, but to, to go to the biggest cities, it's almost impossible to do it without going by plane, mm. still. I mean, you can, you can go by, by train from Oslo to Copenhagen and then continue, because when you're on the continent, it's much easier. But getting there can sometimes be more problematic. So, um, I mean, if you are... If you get to, to Amsterdam, you can go to all cities in Europe by short train trips. And that makes it possible for them. But we have had big discussions in Norway because a lot of, of the younger musicians especially have wanted to go to Japan because it's cool to go to Japan and to play for 10 people four times and then travel back again. That's not sustainable. And there's been a lot of discussions on this. And uh, Music Norway and also the Arts Council have, have uh, supported tours like that. But they are now saying that we cannot continue doing this if we shall talk seriously about the footprint.